Max, we all want to know what it means to be a person, and we can have various descriptions of it, but how do we trace that through time? Because everything about me changes. Uh, all my molecules will change, my, my skin, my brain, my heart at different times will recirculate, but certainly I'm, everything about me is different from when I was a child, but I still feel like I'm the same person. Is that an illusion? Uh, how, how can we understand this feeling of persistence through time? It's a tough question. It's a really an ancient problem that philosophers have banged their head against for thousands of years. And I think you made a very good point there when you talk about all the molecules and cells are rearranging themselves and there's turnover. So we cannot be the atoms we're made of. That's, I think, an easy answer. That's obviously wrong. Yeah. So what is it that matters? Uh, a lot of people think it's, you have to have a soul, especially those who believe in reincarnation. They think someone continues because their soul hops from body to body. But to me, that can't possibly be right either, because the soul seems to be some kind of container that has no personality, has no values, no beliefs, no history. So why would I care about surviving of the soul? It's really irrelevant. Yeah. So really, I think those who said, uh, like John Locke, who argued that it's essentially memory, I think they were getting a lot closer to the more satisfactory answer. And I think memory is a large part of it, but it's not everything by far. I think you can have dispositions and values and other characteristics, even if you lose all your memories, all your declarative memories, you don't remember who you are, what your name is, mm. where you came from, you could still have the personality that's built up from previous actions. Mm -hmm. And so if that survived, even with no memory, I think you've still at least partially survived. So for me, you know, based on Derek Parfit's view, you know, a very eminent philosopher in this area, I believe essentially you continue as the same person, more or less, if there's an overlapping set of psychological connections, connections of memory, of disposition, of beliefs, of values, and so on. So long as enough of those continue over a certain period of time, and that's very vague, is how much is enough, uh, then you remain the same individual. So you can have massive changes in who you are and, and your characteristics, but so long as you, um, those are not forced on you from the outside, like in a brainwashing, where there's a, some kind of disruptive change, if you develop those from within and they come from you, and you absorb influences from the outside and make them your own, you're still continuing. You still continue to exist. And if you go through some trauma and have complete amnesia and I lose all my memory, uh, yet still in my first person sense, I may forget who I am or what my family looks like, but, but still I have this inner sense of me. I have a me that doesn't know very much, but that inner person still seems to be very similar, even without the memories. It could be, but it could also not be similar. It could be, uh, as in some cases we've heard described, where someone has an accident, a car accident, has been hit on the head, and then someone says, this person, I don't recognize who this is. Who is this person? They act totally different. And there's a radical change yeah, in personality. I, 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 th I think that's a difference, though. I think, I think we're talking about memories, personality, what you do with those memories. People with brain tumors go from very sedate people to, uh, to child pornographers. I mean, the, the, there are many cases that were caused by brain tumors. So, change of personality, but I'm talking about something more um, um, philosophical, if we, the inner personal sense that I know it's me looking out at the world, uh, even devoid of the externalities of memory or, or personality of that. But maybe that's not true. Maybe I'm imagining that, that I have that inner sense of an identity, but my identity is really uh, the the, the buildup of all these memories and personalities. So maybe if you took that away, I really wouldn't be here. Certainly for myself, speaking for myself, if I knew I was going to lose everything, it's some kind of it's some very bare sense of I'm here, I'm looking out through my eyes. Yeah. I wouldn't feel like I'd survived. Mm. I, I wouldn't really be making plans for that person if I knew I was going to be wiped out like that. So yeah. just that bare sense of consciousness would not be enough for me to survive as a person, I think. And I'm not even sure you know, how coherent is to, to speak of that kind of continuity because Consciousness is a very strange thing, so what would it mean to have your sense of, of persisting while losing everything? It's not even very clear. Are you fooling yourself? Mm -hmm. We know that people don't really know what's going on in here half the time. <laughs> right, they, right. they give reasons why they've done something. We know right. from experimental psychology right. that they're right. actually wrong. They're yeah. making up stories. Right, right. We don't know what's going on half right. the time. Right. So it might even be something of an illusion in addition. Yeah, cer certainly that, that's correct. And the, uh, what, what is the relationship, therefore, between your th one's theories of consciousness and one's uh, understanding of how personhood persists through time. How do those intersect? I don't really have a good theory of consciousness. I'm still baffled. You know, I've read quite a bit on it and the competing theories, but I really don't have a good answer to the question, what is consciousness? But I'm pretty sure I have a good idea of what personal identity is and continuity. So that leads me to answer that I think they're fairly independent to a certain degree, except that uh, in talking about continuity... You need consciousness in order to have personhood. Right. 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 A, you, you, you can't have personhood without consciousness. Right. 
but you don't have to have a theory of consciousness. So I, I take you were asking if I had a specific you know, view of what consciousness is. Right. And I think those are fairly independent, except that I, I do think to have a, a well-developed sense of personal identity, a theory of personal identity, you need to know what components of the self matter. Mm -hmm. And then a theory of consciousness is somewhat relevant because we know that, for instance, Descartes was definitely wrong. There isn't a single unified consciousness in there. It may seem like that, but it's really not the case. Mm -hmm. We know there are people with you know, split brain problems. There are people with uh, multiple personalities. And even on a more common level, people with brain lesions who have all kinds of strange things going on in their brain mm -hmm. where they, you know, one hand does something, the other hand doesn't know what it's doing, mm -hmm. and they can, they can fight with each other. So it's really a whole set of these different modules that presumably evolved to keep us alive. And they've come to interact pretty well. But you have to ask yourself, well, under what conditions could I lose part of that, one of those functions, and still be the same person? How much would that matter? Yeah, if you had different theories of consciousness, you say you don't know, and that's an honest thing. Uh, you know, people who know, who, who say they know, really don't know. <laughs> so uh, th that's a, certainly a coherent position. But how would they, it, different views of consciousness, affect your 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 views of personhood? If you had a, a dualistic uh, view of consciousness or a wholly uh, reductionist uh, uh, materialist, would that affect your, your analysis of personhood if you had radically different kinds of understandings of consciousness? I think it could. Um, in terms of if you're, if you're a real dualist, a substance dualist, then presumably your sense of, of personality and uh, persistence and survival will be related to some non-material substance. Because right. otherwise, why believe in substance dualism? Right, right, That's right. the important part, not the body. Yeah. And I personally find that actually an incoherent position. I just don't understand how that can make any sense. Um, and certainly, I don't think we have no evidence that there is any kind of other realm which could uh, hold the personality and transfer it and keep it coherent. Mm -hmm. To me, it's because I'm, I'm sitting in my brain. I, you know, my brain is doing this processing. And for now, that's me. Maybe it won't always be me. Maybe I'll better transfer those patterns to some different substrate, but it'll still be a physical substrate of some kind. Mm -hmm. So yes, if I was a hardcore dualist, then I think that would affect my, my view of identity and continuity.